17 verse 17. Okay. Proverbs 18 24 says there's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Yeah. Proverbs 27 verse 6 says wounds from a friend can be trusted. Proverbs 27 verse 10 says do not forsake your friend and the friend of your father. Hmm. Now I know right now in this generation IG is the thing, amen, Instagram. Hey. But allow me some latitude here, okay? Oh. I use Facebook. I know. Okay. Yeah. I gravitated to the eyes you get. I will catch up, amen. It's, it's difficult, right? But Instagram has followers. Uh -huh. Facebook has friends, and that's how it kind of started. I, I remember back in the day, MySpace. Hey, Personally, I thought MySpace was actually pretty cool, but Facebook just took off right now. Yeah, On Facebook, you could have over like 5,000 friends. But how many of those people that, you know, you send out a reference? Are, you know, are actually your close friends. Who's going to be there when you're in a jam? Yeah. Who's going to come to your aid? How many of them actually really know your life? 
life. How many of them actually really know what your what, what your struggles are? Yeah. They know the details of your life, and if you're not like actually, you know, taking pictures of your latte or your food or or, or or maybe wherever you might be at, I don't know. But when you really need a friend, who's gonna be there? Yeah. Come on, Jacob. You know, Luke 15 about the prodigal son. He goes and squanders everything on wild living. And all of his friends were there, and they're having a great time. He's probably paying for everything and meals and all that stuff. <laughs> it's true. But as soon as the money was gone, yeah, the, friends? Oh, the friends were gone. The friend? And that story, that account is a reminder in this world. The world really, at the end of the day, cares nothing for you. Yeah. It's shallow. It's empty. Come on, it's superficial. Everyone at the end of the day, if they're not a disciple of Jesus Christ, are out for themselves. Right. Yep. We have a dilemma. A social dilemma. Yeah. Anyway, it's turned into Instagram. It's just full. It's like, I don't want you to meet your friend. Just follow me. Dang. Wait a minute. That's crazy. YouTube, subscribe. Just, 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 you know, just be a subscriber. I don't really care. Just, just get on my program right here. That's crazy. And I don't think we understand this morning that social media, don't get me wrong, it, it serves a purpose and there's some good in that. Amen? I'm not down on that at all. I think of Jesus... Where you know we're here, he would probably use Instagram. He'd probably have more followers than anybody. Right? Yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. But I don't think we understand the smartphone and all this stuff as technology has advanced. How much distance it has yeah. created between people yeah. all over the world. Yeah. As technology is advancing, me man, you can you can now go to like Panera Bread or these restaurants like Chick Fil A, and you don't need to interact with anybody. True. Yeah. True. Because I don't, I don't want to talk about it. I mean, someday you're going to go to a supermarket and there's going to be a robot there or maybe be the same exact thing. So if you're more natural than serve, you're probably pretty fired by that. Because they just don't talk to anybody. And that's what you see. Yeah. We've lost that human connection. We've lost that the how to have a conversation with each other, yeah. how to communicate with each other, right. how to actually at the end of the day just love people. Yeah. I remember uh, I, was, I was getting ready for this lesson. I saw a picture, um, you know, just of a family at dinner time, and this was the dinner. They were all there, and they were all there. Yeah. The mom, the dad, and the kids. That's not far from the truth. That's crazy. Come on, Jacob. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, uh, so, this might be last. No, it was a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I had some of the guys come over for a, for a, a discipleship group. Right? And it was six of them. They came to my house. It was about seven thirty, and I had to put Bubba down to, to you know for, for the night. And I was just finishing up. They all came in. The three of them. They sat on you know each separate couch. And, um, and I put Bubba down, and then I came out to the living room. Oh, As I came out to the living room, oh, all six dudes oh, on the couch, this is what they were doing. What were they doing? Oh. Nobody was talking to each other. It starts first with you being friends with Jesus Christ. Oh, here to John 15. Are you guys ready to get in the Bible? That was just the intro. John 15. Let's reclaim friendship. Verse 9. As the Father's loved me, so I've loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I've obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I've told you so that my joy may be in you. And that your joy may be complete. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this. That he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants. Because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead I call you friends. For everything I learned from my father I have made known to you. You do not choose me. But I chose you and appointed to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. Wow. See, Jesus right here 
right before he gets arrested to, to go and die on a cross, he has his disciples right there. Right. And he's drilling the point home yeah. about loving each other, yeah. about being friends. Remind him, hey, this is how I am with you. You are my friends. <laughs> Now you've got to be that for each other. Yeah, yeah. And how many times in the scriptures where he just challenged them to, to love each other? Yeah. But right here, he tells them, here's the reality. I chose you. I chose you. You didn't choose me. This is what he's telling them there. So what's the first thing you've got to learn? If you've got to learn about true friendship, number one, you got to accept the friend request. You've got to accept the friend request. You did not choose me, but I chose you. We understand that. That's the gospel. 1 John 4.19 says, we love because he first loved us. Why do you love God back? Because you understand yeah. that he loves you. Come on, Jacob. Yeah. And that causes a reaction right. to love God back. Right. Understand, you're like, well, well, why is that so important, bro? Well, because if most people knew what you and I were like, Oh my goodness. Uh, Would they really accept your friend's question? No. If they knew some of the things that you said, uh, if they knew some of the things that you have done, even right now, if I knew the thoughts you were thinking about me right now, or the thoughts you're thinking about her, or the thoughts you're thinking about him, I didn't know that was in there. But this is grace. Right. Yeah. This is the love of God. Yeah, come on, bro. Despite all that, no. I chose you. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Come on, Jacob. How about this? We all have weaknesses. We all have flaws. We've all done things we're not proud of. We've all thought things we're not proud of. Yeah. And that keeps happening on a daily basis. Yeah. Despite all that, God desires to be close to us, to be friends. Yeah. This is the gospel. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 16 talks about we no longer regard Christ from a worldly point of view. Right. When we get baptized, we become a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. Our thinking has changed. The way we see the world and think about the world is no longer from a worldly point of view. The way we view each other is not from the world. Well, that's my brother. Well, yeah. that's my sister. That's my friend. Right. That's my friend. And there's a close call. <laughs> that's what makes the kingdom so, so special. Yeah. yeah. The scripture says that Jesus... We were in the ministry of reconciliation. At one point, our friendship with God needed to be reconciled. We were right. with God. And God sends that friend request through Jesus Christ dying for our sins. Yeah. So in the same way, if you use the social media thing that I use, you know, you send out the friend request right there. What do people got to do? Accept it. Either accept it, deny it, or just completely ignore it. How do you accept the request of the day? Well, verse 14 tells you, you're my friends. If you do what I command. Yeah. Obedience. Come on. That's the question. Who is going to obey the Bible and walk like Jesus walked? Go over here to 1 John chapter 2. You may be wondering, why is that so important? Well, I love how the Bible makes things very clear. Very clear. Yes. We're a Bible church. We like going by the Bible, not Bias. Amen. That is my last name. My name is Jacob. That also means he who grasps the heel. So follow along. Make sure I'm not pulling your leg. Amen. Oh! So Jesus said it. I didn't say it. He did. Are you with me here? First John chapter 2. Verse 3. It says, We know that we've come to know if we obey his commands. So, oh, look at that. If. All right, so we got an option right there. Okay. The man who says, I know him. Yeah, I know him. Oh my gosh, I know him. But does not do what he commands is a what? Liar. Oh. And the truth is not in him. But if anyone who obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete. And this is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. Mm. It's pretty clear. 
that I claim to know Jesus, but yet don't do what He says, do I really know Him? No. I can send a friend request out to so many, many people. But do I really know those people at the end of the day, and do they really know me? No. 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 The same thing, like I can know about Jesus, but if I'm not really doing what Jesus commands me to do, the scripture says, Do I really know him? And if I say I do, well then I'm just lying. Oh. So you're either an acquaintance or you really do know Jesus. Okay. And the litmus test? Obedience. Absolutely. It's not when you feel like walking like him. It says, must right. walk like no him. Come on, Jacob. Answer the call of discipleship. Be willing to give up everything. Right. Repent. Get baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. Come on, Jacob. Come on. And I get it. I get it. Because where are we all coming from? Where are we all coming from? We're all coming from the world. Yeah. It's a tug of the heart. True. Yeah. It's a tug. True. Yes, it yeah. is. That even that word obedience, we're all coming from places like, oh, did you, did you, did you, did you just say over here? Did you say that? You had a broken heart. Yeah, church. You said obey. That's a bad word. There's got to be another word. That's what some of you say. Oh! <laughs> she should probably pray. Oh, stop it. Yeah. So you don't get led astray. Oh! I'll keep going another day. Brothers and sisters, you can't have it both ways. If you're a guest here, you can't have it both ways, even though people try all the time. Yeah. Uh, Let me wake you up a little bit. James chapter 4. I thought about opening with this one, but I decided not to. Okay. Verse 4. You adulterous people. Oh. Oh. Okay. Right. Don't you know that friendship with the world is hatred toward God? Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes a what? An enemy. An enemy of God. I can't get anything else outside of that. Isn't that what people try to do? They try to have it both ways. Yeah. He says, you adulterous people. Dang. If I told Courtney, yeah, babe, hey, honey, uh, till death to us part, honey. Yeah. <laughs> One more weekend, though, out of the year, though, I want to go be with this one. Oh, 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 Obedience is complete disobedience. You think you can have your cake and eat it too. You are sadly mistaken. Come on, And you don't realize how much that's jacking you up and jacking everyone else up. It's what's turned people off to Christianity. In your home, your parents said they were Christians, but they were hypocrites. They were doing singing the songs on Sunday, but what were they doing Monday to Saturday? How many of you went to places as soon as service was over? You had people in the back in the parking lot smoking cigarettes and chicken yeah, right, 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 and talking about what they were doing at the club. Right. Yeah. And you're like, Mom, you want me to go to people? I'm coming back. I don't, yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, that's true. Come on, bro. Come on, Jacob. <laughs> and what I'm preaching and how I'm preaching is rare. Yeah. Yes. I don't think many of us know how narrow the road actually is. Yes. Come on, bro. I'm all for, you know, helping you have hope and inspiration and all that stuff. Our hope is found in God. Yeah. But you can't be afraid at times to lay it on out. Lay it on out. Come on, bro. Because this is lost. Yeah. Thank you, bro. Come on. This is lost. You think that, hey, I can, I can go on to this and I'm going to be okay. Let me tell you what. God will, in His kindness, He'll let you do that for a little while. That's so true. He will let you do it for a little while. Yes. Yep. If you're married, it will jack up your marriage. Like, it costs so much destruction and pain. Yeah. It will take years to recover. Yeah. Yeah. If you have kids, 
you don't realize. You might think they're small and all that stuff, and like, ah, no, 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 trust me. They're watching and they're paying attention each and every single day. Yeah. What you say and what you don't say. Yeah. You're single, you think like, oh, my friends are having no doubt. No, 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 they're watching. They see. You live in a household, they see. Don't think that you can pull the wool over anybody's eyes. They absolutely see your partial obedience, which is absolute, complete disobedience. Yeah. This is the church that we're trying to build right here. Come on. People that are friends with God. Yeah. yeah. That are moved, man. God chose me. Yeah. Me. I, I am messed up. Right. Come on. I am so messed up. I have so many flaws. So many flat sides. Right. I have no hair. I took Mama to go get a haircut. He's four years old. I took him to go get a haircut. He's been. And I was kind of cracking up. I had a hat on. And the ladies were like, How many haircuts? I'm like, If I didn't have my hat on, you'd have to that question right there. There's one haircut. I'm like, Take this off. You why I have to But I appreciate you asking. <laughs> you know, when I think of someone who accepted the friend request of Jesus Christ, I think of a man right here. He was going to Sac City Community College. He was on the wrestling team. I think right here can take pretty much anybody down. Yeah. Yeah. Right, he was a warrior, man. He was a warrior. It's crazy. Uh, but he wanted to go in the military. He wanted to go in the military. He studied the Bible. And he came face to face to see that God was calling him into his army. I remember one moment, the cost, he saw the cost before him. He's like, man, well, maybe I can have you know, a little bit of Christianity. You know, like, he tried to skirt away, but I'll never forget. Victor and I were there on campus getting ready for Bible talk. And we, and we saw Ryu. We're like, we went over there like, bro. And he came and he sat down and after the Bible talk was done and the lesson was done, we sat down and we just chopped it up and I just looked at him and I was like, bro, oh, like, I know you want to do this. Yes. And he said, I just do my best to pour faith into this young yes. man. He saw the call, he saw what God was doing and, and he made that decision. He has one of the best baptism pictures yeah. you've ever seen. It's like, his fist are up in the air and it's just like glory right there. And uh, it's so awesome to see him get gra you know, graduate, walk on Friday. Yeah. He has a Mexican flag over his back. He's got an American flag. The Mexican American right there is awesome. He graduated with a history degree. Wow. And, and, and this guy, he's not just talking and teaching about history, he is ready to change history for all time. Another guy that I. Uh, when I think about accepting the friend request, I think about Cain. Yeah. He's used to our campus. Cain's a computer science major. Comes from an Asian family. That's true. He's been going to the same church all his life. And the same way, he had to wrestle with the truth and the scriptures. Come on, like, well, sure did, yeah. I see this as sound doctrine. I see what I grew up knowing is not right. I got to make a decision. Yeah. And at the cost of being willing to go back, say, "Hey, I'm leaving. Yeah. I'm going to be a disciple." Yeah. Even at the cost of knowing that's not going to make his parents happy. No. Yeah. Yeah. But he put it online. Yeah. And in faith, he stepped out. He did what he had to do. He got baptized into Christ. Oh, and came to an incredible yeah. He leads our worship. Yeah. 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 He also is in charge of the app and he makes sure the books are okay. Yeah. Yeah. But the Lord answered a long time prayer. That's not just for Ryun and just for Kay, it's for every single one of you. Come on, bro. Yeah. 
The question comes in our first point this morning from many of our guests. If you're studying the scriptures, the question is like, will you accept the friend request of Jesus today? Come on, Jacob. Do you understand that he wants to bless your life? Yeah. Yeah. That the Lord, understand, has an incredible plan for you. It's just like we heard the community this morning. His timing is absolutely perfect. Yeah. Come on. Don't be faked out. What the world is trying to offer you. Yeah. I've done that. I've been down that road. I don't want anyone else to. I do my best when I'm on campus trying to get these young men yeah. to be set free. Right. Yeah. That I wish I could go back. I wish I could answer that call at 18 years old. But I'm one of the world that I had no idea the destruction and the people that I would hurt along the way. Yeah. I had no idea. I had no idea. Right. Yeah. If only I would have accepted it back then. Right. Yeah. And all the pain and the strife. It would have saved me. I challenge you this morning yes. to accept the friend request and become a true friend of yeah. Jesus Christ. Let's go back to John 15. Come on, Come on Jacob. Jacob. Come on, Jacob. Second point. Very, very simple. Love each other. Aww. Love each other. Isn't that what we all want? Yeah. Is love. Yeah, and this is, Jesus knew this. And this is what he says in verse 12. My command is this, love each other as I loved you. Greater love is no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. Verse 17, this is my command, love each other. This was huge because he understood these guys were so different from each other. Yeah, yeah. it's true. He knew that. He knew, I, I'm going away, I'm leaving you guys here. But in order for this to work, in order for you guys to make an impact and make it, you have to love each other. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, think about it. These guys were fishermen. They were tax collectors and zealots. The right. zealots were trying to overthrow Rome. The tax collectors were working for Rome and actually, you know, uh, on the wrong side and taking money from their own people. Yeah. Right. Wow. So these two did not like each other. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Are you with me right here? Yeah. 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 So can you imagine? Tell them to love each other. Like, what, you want me to roll with that guy? <laughs> you want me to go and, and create the gospel and walk along with this guy, this guy who I just grew up hating? And that's what you want me to kill? Can you imagine that? Wow. All right, that's like blacks and whites hanging out together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that makes no sense. Oakland Raider fans in San Francisco 49 and complete harmony? That makes no sense. Hold on. That makes no sense. People. I want everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Are you fired up that the kingdom of God is not about a character dynasty? Yeah. Yeah. You fired up about that? Yeah. Like I just seem like no, no, no. The one true church is just a black church. Oh. Wait a second. Yeah. Jesus, yeah. Jesus was black. No. Well. <laughs> out and stay in that place is, and, and to be able to do that is you say, no, Jesus chose me. Right, yeah. And whoever you are, wherever you come from, like you stay humble and sober because you know, like, I don't deserve this. Right. And as you go on, accomplish things, you you spite to like, no, I, I, I am nothing. In a humble nothing. state. Yeah. Not beating yourself up, but in a humble state. Right. Wow. But as God gives me things and blessings and all this thing, like, hey, I, I, at the end of the day, who am I that God has brought me this time? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Lord. Yeah, come on, Jacob. Come on, Jacob. Come on. Understand as your relationship with God grows, so does your ability to be great friends with each other. Yeah. yeah. Your ability to love each other as the scripture commands right here. Because you understand as we come into the kingdom, we're not perfect. True. No. Oh, still this, is not, this is not a perfect church. You know, because we're in it. And some of us, we're actually learning how to be friends. Yeah. Yeah. This is what we're learning. And, and understand that 
you know, we will be disappointed by each other. Yeah. Uh, there will be things that will be said or not said that will rub you the wrong way. Right. We'll let each other down. I have probably already done that. What? And, and you, you know why? Do you know why? Yes, because I'm not Superman. In my nature, I'm selfish. Oh. oh. In my nature. Oh. You know who I think about? That is in my nature. Now some yeah, got that more yeah. than others. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Alright? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I'm with you. I know it's in us in all sort of degree because we're human. Yeah. 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 And so when Jesus says lay down your life for each other, love each other, you know why he says that? Because it doesn't come natural. Yeah. Yeah. It ain't natural. Yeah. It does not come natural. Right. You know what's natural? Bro. Unfriended. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Oh. That's not Oh my goodness! Talk about it, bro. You know what's natural? Blocking something. True. That's natural. Yeah. Or ghosting them. Together, you know what you're gonna have? Many opportunities. <laughs> to nice. the Bible. Come on! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Many opportunities. To yes, sir. Uh, Many of them to fight for unity. Yeah. Yeah. To fight for it. To make every effort to keep the bond at peace. You need that in a marriage. Yeah. yeah. To fight for unity. Yeah. What happens when you? Why? Why do people end up like just just? Somebody doesn't want to unlock horns. Oh. But as soon as that person, you know, hey, baby, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, can, uh, I be, can I be open? Can I be, be open, bro. Be open, bro. Be open. Be open, bro. Be open. Be open. Remember, who, remember who I am? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I remember. Not Selfish. Superman. Not yeah. Superman. Uh -huh. That is not my first reaction to say I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't believe one day. If you can say you're sorry, babe, it's my fault. Okay. It'll go well. Okay, Amen. Okay. I'm still working for him. Come on, bro. But we got to do that with each other. That the scars won't go away, they'll be there. You're looking right here. Yeah. yeah. But because you practice the Bible, you can forgive that brother or sister from the heart. Yeah. And still love that person. Are you with yes. me here? Yes. We keep no record of wrongs. Absolutely. Come on. We give our heart to one another. Yeah. See, all of us come into the kingdom not really knowing how to love like this. Yeah. Because maybe you didn't see it. That's true. <laughs> maybe it was not there for you. Right. But naturally, well, like I said, it's just, it's just right. not natural in your right. core. But he says, greater love this than no one lay down his life for his friends. Yep. Yeah. How many of you lay down your life for your friends? Yeah. Come on, Jacob. You're lying because you're still here. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you need, when you're in need, I'll be there. Yes. Yeah, come on. That's what a real friend does. Right. Yeah. Are you with me right here? Yes. You ask yourself, well, how did Jesus love, love everybody? He spent time with them. Yeah. He served them. Yeah. He told them the truth. Yeah. Jesus was a master. He knew how to impact the lives. He knew how to win the hearts of people. And, and this is something as a family, as we grow, as we continue to expand. Understand, this is lost in the world. Yeah. Right. This is not preached like this. This expectation that we got to love like this. It was a command. Yeah. Right. No, love each other. Yeah. Be committed to each other. Right. Right? If it's a drive, it's worth the drive. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right? Yeah. absolutely. Whatever it might be, spending time on that stuff, again, it's not natural. 
But look, like you understand at what level, like okay, some some of you it's natural to serve people. That's no problem. Right? 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 Some of you like you like to get gifts, and that's awesome. Right? right? Some of you are like words of affirmation, and that's great, right there. Yeah. Yeah. Right? There's just different levels of of uh, of love. Yeah. Yeah. But we always see, like, man, where am I lacking? Man, I gotta get it. Man, I gotta work on that right there. All right, and maybe it's time and all that stuff. And man, I gotta work on that right there. And you know what that is right there. In First John three sixteen uh, to eighteen, Jesus lays it out. It's like, hey, uh, let us not lo lo love with words, mm. but in actions right. and in truth. Yeah, actions and truth. There it is. Yeah. So you can tell, you can tell somebody you love them all day long. Mm. If you haven't done anything. Your actions are communicating yeah. another way. Mm. You know, many times as we've gone on here. Um, people come around and without fail this just happened on Friday uh, where I'm told they come in like man, this is an incredible church right. mm -hmm. yeah. man this is this is an awesome place yeah. mm -hmm. and I know why that is mm -hmm. it's because we understand the command of Jesus Christ yeah. Yeah. to love each other like the, the, somebody was telling me on Friday man this is such this is such a joyful group <laughs> and you know what the scripture says like my joy will be complete when we obey the scripture so when we're obedient mm. we're living out the scripture yeah. Yeah. it is evident to everyone like wow we really are disciples of Jesus Christ yeah. yes, sir. you know on Friday we honored Nick and we honored Daisha graduate yeah. Yeah. and uh, it was just so special I man I appreciate Jen Jen organized the party yeah. 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 but everybody pitched in I think Kizzy made greens which was super cool yeah. It was, it was just it was a family affair but those stuff was that stuff just so so special we're, we're encouraging the family and it was such a beautiful moment in that place thank you so much to the sisters for getting that clubhouse right there uh, that was just a great great place but you can just hear the joy you can hear the buzz in the room right now uh, I don't know when y'all left I have no idea you know hopefully hopefully over there oh yeah but it was so so special to see like that's what people are Celebrate so, right, as one part, you know, honors. We all rejoice with it. Right. Yeah. And, and let me tell you what: this is what people need to see. Yeah. Yeah. We will continue to see that if we maintain our love for each other. I want to ask you this morning: okay. what are those selfish parts that may have been popping up right there? Mm. Oh. Your unnatural reaction right oh. there, or keeping people yeah. at a distance, or, 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 or not being committed, or not not having those tight knit relationships. Come I on, want to bro. challenge you. To make sure your love is just like Jesus. Come on, Jacob. So as people come in, what they see is that love of Christ, and they say, "Wow, these are really disciples of Jesus Christ." Let us go after loving each other. Amen. Yeah. Lastly, number three. Real quick, very simple. Make friends. Make friends. Make friends. Amen, bro. We need it. Verse 16 okay. says, you did not choose me, okay. but I chose you to appoint you to go bear fruit, fruit that will last. He just tells them, like, hey, as your friends, now go make friends. Yeah. This is why I chose you. So go. Go bear fruit, fruit that will last. Go make other disciples. And right now, as summer is here, yeah. this is our purpose. Do you know that God still operates in summer? Yeah. <laughs> All right, you know, we, we're not putting a sign up on our Facebook page or whatever, like, hey, close for the summer. Close for the summer. Wait a minute. Alcohol good. I mean, you go to Tahoe, go to the beach, go do whatever you want to do, go on vacations and all that stuff. Go to San Diego, I don't know, maybe go to a different country. Hey, uh, have a wonderful time. But we don't take a spiritual vacation for the Lord right here. Amen. Uh, there are people everywhere that we got to make friends with. Are you with me right here? And bear that fruit. Yeah. Fruit that'll last. Yeah. I want to remind you here as we finish up, you have no idea of the gal or the guy that you'll impact for all eternity. Right. Yeah. Just because you answered that call of going and making a fruit. And I want to close with a story this morning. I like stories. I like stories, Jesus. It's a story about a high school freshman. And he had a big weekend plan. And uh, he was going to go to a party with some friends, and then he was going to go to the football game. Well, while he was on his way, he saw a kid from class walking home from school. 
I met this young man, his name was Kyle. And I looked at him, he's carrying all his books home, and, uh, and this guy thinks to himself, like, why would anybody bring all their books home? Like, what is this guy? Is this guy some kind of nerd or something like that? Oh my god. Wait, like kind of this is what he thought of us, remember? He might have been Yeah, exactly. Oh, at that moment, a bunch of kids came running down the sidewalk and they ran at Kyle, knocking all of his books out of his arms and tripping him so he landed in the dirt. His glasses go flying. They land in the grass about 10 feet from him. He looks up and he sees in Kyle's eyes a terrible sadness. The guy says, my heart goes out to him. So I jogged over him and as he crawled around looking for his glasses, I, I saw the tear in his eye. And as I handed him his glasses, I said, those guys are mean, man. Yeah. They should really get lives. Yeah, yeah really. Yeah. Kyle looks at me and he says, hey, thanks. With a big smile oh. on his face. Oh. He finds out that Kyle didn't live that far from him, so he helped him carry his books home. Oh. Invited him to join him and his friends that weekend. The more that he, Kyle was around, the more that he realized that like, Kyle was actually a really likable guy. Yeah. Oh. And his friends thought so, too. Over the next four years, they became close friends, and they became seniors. And they began to think about college. Kyle decides to go to Georgetown. And I was going to go to Duke University. I knew that we would always be friends, and that Miles would never be a problem. He was going to be a doctor, and I was going for business on a football scholarship. Over the years, he said, Kyle transformed into a great looking guy. But I was kind of envious. Graduation came. Kyle was the valedictorian. As Kyle approaches the podium to give his valedictorian speech, clears his throat and begins. Graduation is a time to thank those who helped you make it through in those tough years. Your parents, your teachers, your siblings, and maybe a coach, but mostly your friends. I'm here to tell you all oh, that being a friend to someone is the best gift you can give them. And I got a story to tell you. He then relates that as a freshman in high school, he decided that his life was not worth living. He had planned that on a particular weekend, he was going to go commit suicide. He had cleared out his locker to take home all of his possessions so his mother wouldn't have to do it later. Thankfully, I was saved, Kyle said. My friend saved me from doing the unspeakable. Just a simple, selfless act of kindness. And that small act developed into a friendship. Do you understand now why Jesus would call us to be friends with each other and then go make other friends? That friendship models so much what friendship in his ministry was all about. Yeah. That right there, right this morning, as I close, we have no idea. Still this summer, still this year, there are so many other Kyles out there in this city. Yeah. So many Kyles that God wants you to meet as we go. And as we go, we'll spend the summertime and have all that fun in the sun. But let us truly be in the sun right there. Amen? Amen. And be that light of the world. This right here is the cure to the social dilemma. Yes. There are people out there searching for true friendship. Mm -hmm. Oh, they might not tell you in the moment, but it is in there. Yes. The answer is found in the gospel and in his kingdom. Are you with me right here? Yes. Yes. If you're our guest right here, the challenge is very simple. Accept the friend request. Mm. Don't deny it. Don't ignore it. Yeah. But confirm it. Amen. And be friends with Jesus Christ. And let us leave here going and smashing the social dilemma, making other friends. Are you with me? To God be the glory.